Hey folks, so we're going to be taking a quick preview look at the Mirage 2000C S4. This is the top aviation reward from the uh, Winter Extreme 2023 holiday event. Because this isn't available yet, um, I'm not going to be able to take it out into a mission, but we'll take a look at its features and I'll at least bring it into a test flight and give you guys a little bit of a preview and some general thoughts because a whole bunch of you have been dropping comments on my videos um, asking me to, to talk about this vehicle. This is the first time in quite a while for one of these holiday events um, that we're getting a high tiered air superiority fighter as the main reward as opposed to a ground attack vehicle um, or like a, a tank or something as the as the main high tiered reward. So really this deserves a little attention. I have a review up already of the Mirage 2000 C S five. So when this comes out, if I do a, a full review, it'll probably be in my quick review format. Um, it'll be a little shorter cause there's a lot of stuff I've already talked about elsewhere, but anyway, so looking at the pilot here, um, we've got a relatively full featured ballistics computer, EEGS, all the regular ground attack features. We've got the Serval radar warning receiver, which is common on some of the higher tiered uh, French vehicles these days. Uh, short answer on the Serval, uh, Serval, Serval, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's good. This is a good radar warning receiver. The radar set. So. This is the Thompson CSF RDI. Um, I had some comments about this radar set in my review I posted very recently of the Mirage 4000. If you look at the look down modes, it's got head on and head on velocity search. The lack of an all aspect look down mode is a little bit of an issue. It's not some huge crippling problem but it is a disadvantage compared to a lot of other rank eight jets. Um, oh, and of in case it hadn't been mentioned, this, this jet is in rank eight battle rating 11.7. So this is very much going to be coming in as a top tier vehicle. So the radar set, uh, you've also got track wall scan, BVR targeting, ACM targeting, and the SAR H at the bottom. That just means it can guide semi-active radar missiles. This is a relatively good radar set. It's just got that one minor shortcoming. Now let's take a look at, let me get off the X-ray view. Let's take a look at what the secondary weapons are gonna look like here. So, oh, I should also, before that, I should also point out, because this is an event vehicle, not a premium, um, you are gonna have to grind through the upgrades. So here's what the modifications look like. If we hover, I think it's here. Yeah, there's, there's the full stat card, and uh, you can see the countermeasures is going to be 54. So that's something to consider. That's a bit lower than some of the other top tier vehicles, but, you know, it's better than like 20 or something. Um, a pair of 30 uh, millimeter DAFAs is the main cannon armament. You can see the, the speed and rate of climb and everything. I mean, you know, it, it's going to be relatively good performer in the air. So we're going to be taking a look at the weapons here. Um, let me click through here. So you're going to start off with the Magic 1 to start your grind. The Magic 1 is not a bad missile. It's got 35 Gs of pull. It tracks relatively well. The problem is it's only rear aspect. And at the top tier, like fighting at 11.7 with a rear aspect missile, um, the stock grind for the first couple of upgrades will be rough. There is light at the end of the tunnel because you upgrade to the R550 Magic 2. This is a very good, very competitive um, top tier dogfight missile. It's got all aspect tracking and targeting, the infrared counter countermeasures, 35 Gs of pull. The range is okay. The range is listed on the stat cards of the missiles. I talk about it in my complete guide to air to air missiles. Um, the ranges listed on the stat cards are not cut and dry. There's a lot to interpret there, but this isn't a, a bad dogfight weapon. This is good. You'll get a lot of kills with it. Now, for radar missiles, you get two versions here of the Super 530. You get the F and the D. Um, the thing to know about the 530 family, 
The nomenclature is a little weird normally for like Western and, and NATO um, air to air weapons. You expect a later alphabet letter to be an upgrade. That's not the case with the Super 530s. The D is an upgrade over the F. So the F here, you're going to see, um, it's got 20 Gs of pull. It lists the, the maximum launch range there at 40 kilometers. Um, realistically speaking, you're not really going to want to try and take a shot with this beyond around like 10 to 12 kilometers. It's not a bad weapon for head-on attacks. It's not great for tail chases, um, and it's not necessarily great for like maneuvering targets. Uh, but if you catch someone up high or someone coming at you, uh, head on. This isn't a bad weapon. Now, the 530D is a definitive upgrade. It's got much better range. You can reliably get hits with this thing, like out past 20 kilometers against someone coming at you head on. Um, it's faster, it accelerates a little better, and it's got better pull, and the tracking is better. Um, so the, the Super 530D is a genuinely good semi-active radar missile. Now, looking at these loadouts, one of the things that immediately snaps to mind is that you've only got four pylons for missiles. So your top tier loadout with this jet is going to be a pair of Magic 2s and a pair of 530Ds. So you're going to have four missiles, two infrared, two semi-active radar um, as your, your top end air combat loadout. Now for ground targets, you've got some unguided rocket pods, uh, the SNEB 23s here. These are okay. They're not the best, uh, but you can, especially with the CCIP, um, you know, you can effectively use these against ground targets. The problem is they're going to consume all of your air-to-air -air missile pylons. So that's a consideration. If you take a full load of these, you are not taking any air-to-air -air weapons and you may have trouble if you get intercepted or something. Um, it can take a drop tank on the center line and a bunch of 250 kilogram bombs, either the standard... Um, or the parachute retarded. So, my impression of this is that it's going to do relatively good in air combat engagements. Because, again, you can get, you know, four relatively good missiles. But the limited quantity of missiles is going to prevent you from reliably being able to get, like, high kill count matches. You'll be able to fly this out and get, you know, one to three kills uh, without really pushing too hard, without being some hot shot S tier ace. However, if you want to take one of these things out and, you know, pull off one of these like seven kill carries or something like that, you're going to have to get really freaking good with the guns um, because you're just not going to have enough missiles to, to get those kind of results. Not bad. Not saying, you know, this is going to let you down. These are all just considerations to keep in mind. Um, the drop tank, the 1300 liter drop tank could come in handy. The, the Mirage 2000 has a reputation for being a thirsty jet. Um, so being able to, to come out with a drop tank is going to be um, an attribute weighing in favor of the uh, CS4 here. So let's go ahead and uh, whip this thing up into a test flight. Okay, so we're in a test flight with the uh, Mirage 2000 CS4 here. Uh, I have deliberately set up this test flight not to have unlimited fuel because I want you to be able to see the fuel burn. Um, I started off with 34 minutes of gas, and as you can see, the afterburner is chugging through that real quick. I'm, I'm barely seconds into this test flight, and I'm already down a minute of gas. So, something to consider there. Uh, let's take a look at the radar features. We've got the default pulse doppler head-on we've got track well scan head-on pulse doppler velocity search head-on and regular lookup search mode and if you have any questions about what those radar um, modes are uh, shameless plug for my complete guide on radar systems um, sweep angles we've got 30 by 5 120 by 10 and 60 by 10 so you can see over there on the ppi on the right hand side the the sweep angles you get there Range presets, 93, 185, 370, 1937. So, not bad. I mean, in case you're curious, um, looking at the radar scope, the light green area there um, just indicates where the where the radar set believes it's going to be able to get a lock on a target 
as opposed to just detecting a target. But realistically, you're not going to be fighting things out at 200 kilometers. So it's kind of a moot point. All right, so my pilot in this test flight is, of course, not upgraded at all. You can see how quickly and easily I pulled into a 9G turn, blacked out, and lost control. That is going to be your experience taking this out with a rookie pilot. So until you grind uh, some pilot upgrades with this plane, get yourself like up to an expert crew or even an ace crew, it is going to be Blackout City. If you're new to the top tier, uh, get used to that. It's a thing. So the Magic One here, uh, the only weapon I can take for this test flight is the, the Magic One air-to-air -air missile. You can see there it's got a, a relatively good uh, seeker gimbal. Again, the Magic One is not a bad weapon. It's relatively good for, for air combat. The only real caveat with it um, is that it, you know, it remains a rear aspect weapon. So, like, right here, if this was a Magic Two, I would probably have a lock right now and be able to take this shot. May or may not hit, but I'd at least have a lock and be able to take the shot on this MiG-15. With the Magic One, I'm going to have to come in behind him you can see there, I didn't, I didn't get the weapons lock until he was, you know, into my forward hemisphere, and that's, that's normal. That's normal behavior for a rear aspect missile. Let's come back around. So there, you can see we got it right away. So if you're, again, if you're new to to top tier jet fighters, um, that's going to be a common experience for you. That's the difference between an all aspect and a rear aspect um, infrared missile. So I'm going to demonstrate real quick the EEGS. Let me see if I can come down and get a quick lock on this guy. There we go. So what the EEGS does, that's the Enhanced Envelope Gun Sight. Uh, what that's going to do for us is when I get close, you're going to see my, my crosshair changed. I've got that circle with the X in it. That's showing me where my guns are going to go. And the point of that is when you have a radar lock on a target, your plane's ballistics computer calculates where your shots are going to impact. So it's not a lead indicator. It's an impact indicator. It shows you where to shoot or um, where your shots are going to land based on the direction, distance, and speed of whatever it is you happen to have radar locked. So that's, that's really the idea there. Um, and you can see the radar warning receiver on the left. Uh, we're getting tracked by that 2S6. Let's go ahead. We'll turn on the CCIP for the guns. We'll see if we can shut that up. And this will also be a good opportunity to demonstrate the speed and acceleration of this jet. So coming down in a shallow dive, we have gained a lot of speed very quickly. And again, if you're new to top-tier jets, what the CCIP is going to do, it's a feature of the ballistics computer. Um, I talked about in my complete guide on air-to-ground weapons, another shameless plug. It gives us that updated crosshair, showing us where our shots are going to land on the ground. So we were able to, to accurately take out that SPAA. Okay, so that's going to about wrap it up for here. Um, this is the Mirage 2000 CS4. It's the main top tier reward from the Winter Extreme 2023 holiday event. If you're kind of on the fence about grinding for this plane and trying to figure out like how much time you should spend on it or anything, if you already have high tiered French jets, maybe spend your time with this holiday event working on the tanks. If you don't have any high tier French jets, or especially if you don't have any high tiered jet fighters at all, um, this is a really good way to get one without having to grind through the entire tech tree. This is not going to be a bad jet. And in fact, um, its performance and everything is, is fairly forgiving in my opinion. Um, so if you're new to, to top tier jet fighters and stuff, or you're looking to learn top tier jet fighters, this isn't a bad way to do it. You know, the quantity of missiles is going to hold it back a little bit from being some, you know, a team carrying sort of a vehicle most of the time. Um, but it's not going to suck. That's really the main question a lot of folks are, are curious about. This isn't going to suck. And if you're interested in 
getting a top tier rank eight French jet fighter without having to grind through the entire French tech tree to get it, this is a really good way to do that. As always, thanks for watching.